bringing the people behind our food to life. Today we're going to can tomatoes. And we're going to start by talking about variety of tomatoes to can and some information about safety and just general techniques. And one of the first things I want to talk about is just tomatoes. And tomatoes are one of the things that people can the most of because come end of summer they're plentiful. And if you've ever planted and grown your own tomatoes, you probably started with too many plants and then ended up giving them away, drying them, canning them, doing whatever you can to get rid of them. But most people like to can them because they're so nice to use in the winter, jars of canned tomatoes and soups and chilies and uh, casseroles. So they're, they're economical to can and easy to do uh, with some precautions about some safety issues. But the, I've got some regular garden variety slicing type tomatoes. Many people like to use the paste type or sometimes they're called Roma and these are heavy in solids and so if you were going to make tomato paste or a thick sauce uh, this is a nice variety to uh, can. Uh, they're a little harder to find so if you do grow tomatoes I'd suggest that you do uh, try growing those. Here are just some samples of some heirloom varieties. They sometimes are odd shaped. They're all red here today, but it could be yellow, could be orange. Personally, I like red tomatoes for canning, but it doesn't matter what color they are. Uh, they are all uh, can be canned easily in a boiling water canner. The first thing we're going to do is take the skins off, and I'm just going to put a little X in the bottom, put them in the basket. The X helps speed up the skinning process. And then take them over to a kettle of boiling water, put them in there for about 30 to 60 seconds, and the thinner the skin, the faster they'll come off. Uh, sometimes the paste tomatoes are, have a little thicker skin and so it might take the full 60 seconds. But uh, this is the same method you use to take the skins off peaches. Um, if you want to take the skin those before canning them. And so that's about 30 seconds, give or take a few seconds. I'm just going to take these over to the sink where I have some cold water. Put them in there. And this is cool them off a little so you can handle them. And grab my knife. And then very quickly, then you take out the core. Do that while the skin is on, makes it a little easier. And then the skins just slip off. See how easy that is? Sometimes there might be a spot on the tomato that's a little less ripe or a little sun spotted and may not come off really fast. Take that little bit of stem end off. And then you have tomatoes that are ready to be cut up. Some people don't like seeds. Me, I don't care. I just put the whole, I just cut them up and then cook them up. But if you want to remove the seeds, what you want to do is cut them in half horizontally. And then you see all the seeds exposed. And what you can do is sort of like an orange, just kind of squeeze it over here. With a little bit of finger, you can get some of the excess seeds out of the tomato. Okay. To me, there's not a problem, but that's pretty easy to do. I like to cut my tomatoes in the size that I like to eat them in the end product. And the end product for me would be a chunk that I would eat in a chili or casserole. If you like halves, go ahead, cut them in halves. If you like quarters, cut them in quarters. You get to choose the size of the tomato. This tomato, even though it seems a little less ripe, if you have little pieces like that, you can cut them out, compost them, or just can them up. I'm sure you've seen commercially canned tomatoes with little parts, green parts. Won't hurt. This is a knife that I only use for soft foods. Never let your children or husband or anyone else borrow your food knives. They're only for food. Then we have these tomatoes chopped up and I'm just going to put them in a bowl and then I'm going to transfer them. So we have our big bowl of cut up tomatoes and the next step in the crushed hot pack method that I'm using
is to start cooking and I'm just going to put about oh a fourth of the batch in the bottom of this kettle and bring it quickly to a boil and while I'm doing that I am going to sort of press down on the tomatoes and what this does is get the juices running and then the juice is what's going to boil up and then as you get this first part of the batch juiced up and boiling then you just can add the rest you don't have to crush this is why it's called the, the crush method you only have to crush the bottom layer in the pot the rest is just a matter of uh, adding more tomatoes so one of the advantages of slicing type tomatoes is that they're juicy so you can see I've got plenty of juice won't take long for that to come to a boil and while we're waiting for that to come to a boil I want to talk a little bit about tomato safety and tomatoes you probably have heard um, take a little different technique than canning pears or peaches and that's because they're a little lower in acidity than a peach or a pear and what happens is if they become overripe really soft or you know soft and squishy uh, the acidity level um, is lowered and then you get into a situation where it could be dangerous to can these tomatoes. The other precaution is especially when fall starts is never can tomatoes from a frost killed vine because as soon as that vine dies the tomatoes immediately start to lose some of their acidity. So what you want to do is just pick tomatoes that are firm and red ripe for the good flavor and uh, no big bruises or mold, nothing like that. You just want tomatoes that are in good shape. These paste tomatoes, they're nice and firm. You can tell they're a little darker, but they're still nice and firm. These heirlooms, nice red ripe, but again, firm, not overly ripe. Okay. And now we can go back to our tomatoes. They're boiling, and I'm going to add the rest of the tomatoes and bring this entire batch of tomatoes to a boil and then I'm going to let them boil five minutes before we put them in the jar. Takes a few minutes. Meanwhile you should have your jars ready and uh, these are clean jars. They don't have to be sterilized because they're going to be in the boiling water canner for 35 minutes. But I have put up some boiling water in the bottom while we're waiting and that just keeps the jar nice and warm so that when you put a boiling tomato product in it um, the jars is fairly hot. You don't want to put hot tomatoes in a really cold jar because there's an off chance the jar could break. Okay. We're going to add lemon juice to these tomatoes and that's an extra measure of safety and I, you can see I've got bottled lemon juice here. It just happens to be real lemon. Uh, the main thing is when it's bottled commercially prepared lemon juice it's up to a standard acidity level of 5% whereas a fresh lemon which may be okay in jam but in tomatoes you want to use bottled lemon juice because a fresh lemon may be less acidic than your bottled lemon juice. And so we're only going to add one tablespoon per pint or two tablespoons per quart. they have come to a boil and now I'm going to time them for five minutes. The tomatoes are boiling. It'll just be a few minutes before they're ready to can and so I can prepare my jars now dump out the, the hot water and give that lemon juice a shake just make sure it's mixed up and then I'm going to add my lemon juice first so it's just one tablespoon per pint and then I'm going to be all ready and some of the other tools that you need is a jar lifter and a wide mouth funnel and a bubble remover, which could be a plastic knife, a chopstick, whatever works. I want to talk, while I'm waiting, next, could talk a little bit about jars, whether you need a wide mouth or a, na a narrow mouth uh, jar. You can see these pints are all narrow mouth. Uh, the lids come in little boxes like this, ball, cur are the most popular. Um, once you're, you've got your jars, uh, you don't need to keep buying cases where you get the lids and the rings at the same time. You just need to buy the lids. They're only used once. And quartz is four cups of tomatoes. And generally I find that uh, I don't make dishes that require a quart of tomatoes. 
So for my family, a pint jar is just perfect for tomatoes. Meanwhile, another thing you need to do while the, is to get some hot water on your jar lids. And that's just a technique that allows the compound to soften up a bit and you'll be ready to put those lids on. Another gadget, which is kind of fun, is a little magnet here. It's called a lid lifter. You can also go to a hardware store or a quilt shop and get um, a collapsing one, which I kind of find kind of handy. And these are really strong magnets. <laughs> All right, our tomatoes have come to a, have been simmering for five minutes, and we are now ready to put them in the jar and then get them in the canner. The canner has been uh, sitting here with water that's not boiling, but just below a simmer. You want to have your water ready in the canner. And I have my jars here. They're still warm, and they have lemon juice at the bottom of the jar, and just start ladling in your tomatoes. You can see here where the wide mouth canning funnel is an essential. And what you want to do is leave, leave a half an inch of head space. I'm just going to transfer that over here. And that's for both the tomato pieces and the liquid. And so I'm going to run just a couple of quick licks around with my bubble remover to remove any bubbles of air that might be at the bottom of the jar. Quickly clean the lid off. Grab your lid, put it on, your ring. And a little bit of resistance and you just twist it a little bit more. And I can just move that. I'm going to put all of these jars in the canner at the same time. And so now I'm just ready to more tomatoes, steaming hot into the jar. Okay, a little bit more there. The more you do this, the more you'll figure out just how many scoops of or ladles of tomatoes it takes. Let's start putting some of these jars in the canner. Again, your trusty jar lifter, which is very um, because of the rubber, it has a really firm grip on the jar. And you can see as I'm putting these jars in the canner, the water is coming up over the lid, and we want at least an inch of water boiling over the top of those jars. And as I continue to put jars in, uh, we'll have probably two inches over the lid. If you're using pints, generally in a large boiling water canner like this, you can get nine pints in, but only seven quarts. Okay, and we're just about done. Now what do you do when you have just enough tomatoes but not quite enough to fill a jar? I'd either get a smaller jar or I would just put these in the uh, refrigerator and uh, use them up later. Or you could actually, if you wanted, you could actually uh, cap them because you have all that head space and freeze this. Probably have one cup of tomatoes. You could actually let that cool and then put it in the freezer and use it when convenient. So we have put our tomatoes in the canner. We have at least one inch of, of boiling water over the top. I'm going to turn up the heat on high and it'll take a few minutes for the water to come to a boil. We don't want to time them until the water has returned to a full rolling boil. And we're going to time these pints of canned tomatoes 35 minutes. So again, when these come to a rolling boil, then we can let our timer start and we have 35 minutes to clean up the kitchen and wait for our tomatoes to process. You know, you think it takes a lot of time, but it's good time have the music on or have a friend over, make it a project, and you end up with beautiful tomatoes on your shelf that you know where they were grown, 
and you know what went into the jar, no salt, just fresh local tomatoes. You can't beat that. Well, the timer's gone off. Our 35 minutes is up, and so we can take these jars of tomatoes out of the canner. And remember to open the lid away from you because it's hot and steamy. And there's our beautiful jar of tomatoes. Set your jars on a cloth so that you don't have a very hot jar hitting a very cold counter. And then once they are out on the towel, you let them sit and cool for a minimum of 12 hours to 24. And I'm going to can. So sometimes you can get canning, and you may be canning a bushel of tomatoes, and that's 53 pounds, so that's a lot of canning. So, but for now, we just have this one batch here, five jars sitting on our towel, and we can just let those cool. And the important thing is once they're cool, then you're going to remove the rings, clean up. Sometimes a little tomato might ooze out of the jar, and you just clean that up. And then, very importantly, label the jars with a Sharpie pen. Just put the year. And then I would put hot pack, LJ for lemon juice, so that a year from now I know exactly how I did that jar of tomatoes. And they'll sit on your shelf for a year or more. And you use them up as quickly as you can. You want to use up the tomatoes you can this year before you can them again next year. Because once you start canning tomatoes, I think you'll find it's a fun thing to do. They're delicious. And you're helping local farmers. And even better, maybe you're growing your own. And that's tomatoes.